Hey everybody, welcome to worship with Our Savior Lutheran Church in Thomaston, Connecticut, a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. My name is Pastor Rachel Anderson and I'm really excited to be worshiping with you today as I am excited to worship with you every week, but today especially I'm really excited because this coming Sunday, Sunday, October 18th, we're kicking off our annual stewardship campaign to support the mission and ministries, the vital mission and ministries of Our Savior Lutheran Church. Um, I invite you to support us, support one another, however you are able to do that. Um, we can't do this work without folks like you helping to support it with your time, with your talents, and with your treasures. The theme of our stewardship campaign for this year is Together for Joy. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about what it means to be together when we're apart um, and how we're finding joy at a time of great challenge and adversity. Today, especially, um, our gospel text uh, is a, a famous, uh, well-known quote from Jesus. Um, Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and unto God what is God's. It's a great text <laughs> to start out a stewardship campaign. So I invite you to stick around, and we are going to talk all about what it means to give to the kingdoms of this world and what it means to give of ourselves, our whole selves, to God. But until we get to that point, let's pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. be focusing pretty heavily on the psalms for the next several weeks during our stewardship campaign and we're starting with a psalm that you might be familiar with psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not be in want the lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters 
You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperors. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperors, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. So much has changed over these last seven months of this pandemic. Since we last gathered in person in March, over 215,000 of our neighbors have died from COVID-19. They were medical professionals, hospital cleaning staff, teachers, students, farm workers, factory workers, They were retirees, they were grandparents, they were parents, they were young adults, they were children. If you estimate that each of these people knew about 100 people each, that means that right now, over 20 million people, over 20 million of our neighbors are grieving the loss of a friend, a child, a parent, a spouse. Together, we grieve with our neighbors. Since March, one in five businesses has shuttered, some temporarily, but many permanently. Families watched as their American dream turned into a nightmare, seemingly overnight. As of September, approximately 15 million people remain unemployed, and 9 million people have slipped below the poverty line. Millions of our neighbors are wondering, what do I do now? How am I going to feed my family? We sit together with our neighbors in this uncertainty 
and anxiety. Now I'm being very intentional about my use of the word together because even though we've been apart and even though our individual struggles differ, we here at Our Savior Lutheran Church in Thomaston have been together facing these challenges over these past seven months. It's very easy to feel alone at times, especially because keeping ourselves and our neighbors safe necessitates keeping our distance. But whenever I have felt or feel alone, I think of how grateful I am to be a part of a community, a faith community specifically, leaning on the love of God and having people to care about me and my family and people whom I care deeply about. During these challenging times, knowing that this community is in this together has meant so much. It's meant so much to me, and I know it's meant so much to so many of us. Being together and supporting each other through adversity comes with the territory when you're a person of faith, when you study scripture, and when you have this this deep abiding faith that God is with us and for us. Throughout scripture, there is story after story after story of grief, loss, anxiety, confusion, Job on his ash heap, Ruth and Naomi navigating a man's world as widows, the Israelites in bondage in Egypt, the exiles in Babylon, David writing songs to God despite the wars that were raging around him and inside of him. A small band of faithful women and men telling the story of God's love through the life death, and resurrection of their friend, their savior, Jesus, whom they knew and loved, whom they witnessed being tortured and killed. Well, and they're telling this story while they're being pursued by religious leaders and Roman soldiers who want to do to them what they did to their savior. What a gift it is to have these stories, to have these stories of our ancestors in the faith. People like us who struggled, who resisted and failed and despaired, but who clung to their faith, their faith in the God of hope, the God of mercy, the God of forgiveness and new life. Just a little while ago, we read the song of one of our ancestors, the 23rd Psalm. <coughs> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So many of us can recite this psalm from memory because this is a song of comfort and hope in the midst of adversity and despair. We have all walked through the valley of the shadow of death. 
we have all taken a place at a table in the presence of enemies. And yet God is right there with us, leading us to green pastures and still waters, guiding us on the right path, anointing us and providing us with abundance. This ancient song brought comfort and hope to our ancestors when they were enslaved, when they were in exile, when they faced defeat, when they were staring death in the face. In the face of great adversity, they were determined to praise God and to be together in community, even if they had to try something new. As I mentioned before, our stewardship campaign for the 2021 calendar year begins today. Our theme for this year is Together for Joy. Because even though we continue to be six feet apart, we are together through the many changes and challenges we're facing. And we rejoice in this beloved community and our God who is with us and for us through it all. Over the next several weeks, we're going to be talking about a few different Psalms and we'll talk about the parallels between where our ancestors were then and where we are now. And we'll hear from folks about what a difference this community makes in their lives and all of the many reasons why we should joyfully support the work of our savior with our time and our talents and our treasure. This community is a precious gift. Over the course of the pandemic, then and now, you have prayed for each other, called and texted and emailed and mailed cards to each other. And you stepped up in a huge way, multiple huge ways to make sure that kids going back to school had clothes and supplies and that any of our neighbors who needed food got food. You know, there were lots of congregations who struggled to figure out how to get worship online and how to keep their communities connected. But not only were you willing and able to try something totally different by shifting to online worship, but you committed to doing real life changing, life sustaining ministry at a, just an incredibly difficult time. And I pray that you'll hold all those things in your mind, the ways that you have been supported, the ways that you have offered support, and the ways that this community has given you the tools to be the hands and feet of Christ when you pledge to support the work of our Savior. Now, we didn't talk at all about rendering unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. The Pharisees and the little-known Herodians, <coughs> two groups who are usually at odds with each other, team up and they try to trap Jesus. If Jesus says paying taxes is lawful, the Pharisees will say, you're not representing God. And if he says paying taxes isn't lawful, the Herodians will say he's threatening insurgency against the empire. So he's in a trap. But instead of falling into this trap, he says, give me a coin. So immediately someone produces a coin and that coin has the face of Emperor Tiberius on one side with the inscription, Tiberius Caesar Augustus, son of the divine Augustus, as in King Tiberius, son of God. There they are in the temple with a graven image of a man claiming to be the son of a false god. By even possessing this coin, but especially in the temple, they have broken God's law. So Jesus sets a trap for them with this 
much interpreted and much misinterpreted sentence. Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. We aren't so different from the Pharisees and the Herodians paying taxes and submitting to the laws of an empire. But unlike the Pharisees and Herodians, we follow Jesus. And so while we live in the world, our hearts and our minds are fixed on the kingdom of God. So when Jesus says to give to God the things that are God's, we know that everything belongs to God. Absolutely everything. So the only thing to do is to follow Jesus. Follow the example of Jesus. Loving God. Loving our neighbor. Giving our whole selves to God. The kingdom of God is not of this world. But even now, it's breaking into this world and freeing us to live lives of faith, lives of faith in God with love of God and love of neighbor at the forefront. In a world of adversity and challenge, in the valley of the shadow of death, when we are surrounded by enemies. We know because we follow Jesus. We know that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God. Where we will find comfort. Where our neighbors will discover hope. And where we will all be together for joy. Amen. Let us pray. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you call us by your name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. We give thanks for the witness of your servant, Luke, the evangelist whom the church commemorates today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation from the rising of the sun to its setting. May the whole universe show forth your goodness 
Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, may your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt. Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as you raised Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you, especially Scott and Linda. We give thanks for their witness, confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, you are invited to make your offering to God. Although we can't be together in person, the work of the body of Christ continues. This work includes feeding our neighbors, binding up the brokenhearted, modeling justice, mercy, and grace. Thank you for your support of this vital, life-giving work. And let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them in abundance, just as you do with our lives. Strengthen us for service in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for worshiping today with our Savior Lutheran Church. Keep taking care of each other and always remember that you and everybody else, you are all beloved children of God and Jesus loves you and calls you to love one another too. And now the ocean roars, the floods clap the shores, the wind sings over the hills. God is love and grace, and God pours love and grace into the world. And with God's help, we are about to do the same. Go now, good people, to roar, clap, and sing. Let's give everything we have together for joy. Go with the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>